What's going on folks, Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and we made a video, or I made a video rather, earlier today slash yesterday about the new spells contained in Strixhaven, A Curriculum of Chaos. That being said, Silvery Barbs, as I said and so many of you have commented in uh, on that video, has a lot of funky stuff you can do with it. For those of you unaware, I'll just do a very quick recap. Silvery Barbs is a first level enchantment spell that triggers on a reaction of when a uh, creature within 60 feet of you succeeds on an attack roll ability check or saving throw. You can then have that triggering creature re-roll the d20 and use the lower roll. It also allows you to then choose an ally, which could include yourself, within that 60 foot range and they get advantage on the next attack roll ability check or saving throw they make within a minute. Now, one of the things that you might notice, just to start off with the sort of shenanigans you can do with this spell, is it... Uh, it doesn't, it, it kind of circumvents both advantage and disadvantage, and that it says the triggering creature must re-roll the d20 and use the lower roll. Now, again, if they have disadvantage, it's probably not going to be the case because they're going to use the lower number, because remember, this only triggers on a success. But if they had advantage on a roll, and let's say rolled a natural 1 and rolled a natural 20, and then you happen to roll, have say, hey, I want you to re-roll and use the d-roll, and they roll a 13, it says they must re-roll the d20 and use the lower roll. Now, the way I read that is the newest roll that they just made would be the lower roll, but let's say in that same instance, like I said, they rolled with advantage, they rolled a natural 1 and a natural 20, and then you said you need to re-roll, they rolled a 13, I, I think the way it's written is they're supposed to take the 13 because that's the lower roll, but in te technically that one in that scenario is lower. Either way, it would, in, it would negate the natural 20 in this particular instance, but I'm curious what you think. Does it take the ultimate lowest roll or just the newest roll that they made? One way that you could consider this to sort of be some balance is that it's only limited to the bard, sorcerer, and wizard. However, with Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, we have the Fey Touched Feet, and that allows you to increase your intelligence, wisdom, or charisma by one. It gives you a free mist. You learn Misty Step, and it gives you a free version of it once per long rest. You're also allowed to learn a first level spell from the Divination or Enchantment School of Magic. As stated, Silvery Barbs is an enchantment spell, and there is also these lines that they've added. You can also cast the spell using the spell slots you have of the appropriate level. So that means if you are any kind of spellcaster that has spell slots, uh, and you happen to take Silvery Barbs from this feat, it is now basically an additional spell that you can use to cast. Uh, you basically can get it once a day for free, and then cast it using your spell slots as you normally would. Reminder that there are certain things like the custom lineage or the variant human that could technically take Fey Touched from level one and have access to Silvery Barbs right out the gate multiple times, again, on classes that wouldn't normally have it. As an example of a class that wouldn't normally have it, we have the Order Domain Cleric, which was originally introduced to us, I believe, in Ravnica, and it has this ability here at level one, which has interesting interactions uh, called Voice of Authority. It says, if you cast a spell with a spell slot of first level or higher and target an ally with the spell, that ally can use their reaction immediately after the attack to make one weapon, or maybe after the spell, rather, to make one weapon attack against a creature of your choice that you can see. Uh, and if you target more than one ally, you pick which one. But also a reminder, Voice of Authority has no cooldown. It just works whenever you do it. Now... This is, again, another one of those interesting situations, but so technically, someone does, so, uh, you know, some creature succeeds on the attack roll ability check or saving throw, which allows me to trigger Silvery Barbs as a reaction. I targeted that person, but then do I also not target a different creature within range, including myself, to give the benefit of the attack roll ability check or saving throw? I'm not entirely sure, because, I mean, you do target allies as well as targeting enemies, so, in theory, I could have Silvery Barbs as a spell through maybe the Fey Touched Feet as an Order Domain Cleric. An enemy succeeds on an attack roll ability check or saving throw. I trigger Silvery Barbs. I target the enemy to have them try to fail it. But I also target my ally 
whichever one I choose, and then in theory, proccing voice of authority, allowing me to, once the spell has ended, allow them to make one weapon attack. But because of the benefits of Silvery Barb, giving that person advantage on the next attack roll, ability check, or saving throw they make, that attack roll they make immediately following my spell would have advantage. Now, I'm sure you can already think about how this could be amazing, because let's say you pair this with a rogue, you happen to negate the enemies or, you know, use the first part of Silvery Barbs and you choose your rogue companion, they can now immediately make an attack as a reaction with advantage, thus in most situations triggering sneak attack, and it allows them to do it on a reaction, not on their turn, and then they can still again sneak attack once it gets to their turn, pretty much almost guaranteeing you'll have this two sneak attacks a turn every turn as long as you can get these kinds of setups. So that's pretty crazy. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the Enchantment Wizard. Now, Enchantment School is not a school I'm particularly a fan of. Uh, I feel like a lot of the player's handbook uh, wizards I'm not a huge fan of. But they do have this ability here called Split Enchantment. At 10th level, when you cast an enchantment spell of 1st level or higher that targets only one creature, you can have it target a second creature. Now that gets a little tricky because in theory you target two creatures with silvery barbs. You target the initial creature that takes the, uh, takes the negative effect and then you target the creature that takes the positive effect. I don't know, that might have been part of the design, but if not, you could in theory use split enchantment from level 10 of the enchantment wizard to cast silvery barbs and target two creatures. Now you might say, well, that doesn't make a lot of sense because if it's triggered when somebody fails or, you know, succeeds on an attack roll, saving throw or ability check, and then I go ahead and use this. Well, if the other character didn't make an attack roll, uh, ability check or saving throw, it has no benefit. But I would say this would be a, a great use for a wizard with an AoE spell. So let's say I drop Fireball on a couple of enemies. I could use Silvery Barbs if one of them succeeds the saving throw, target it. If two of them succeed the saving throw, I could then target that one as well, having both of them have to take the lower roll. And then, you know, I also have this benefit of choosing... Uh, two of them, like I said, to get the, the lower roll, but then I could also, in theory, choose two allies to get advantage. One could be me, one could be another ally of my choice. So that would be, I guess, the instance where I'd see split enchantment come into play is when I hit someone with, uh, hit a group of enemies, and then I could choose two of them to have to reroll, assuming they succeed, right? If I cast a fireball on a group of 50 kobolds and they all fail, well then silvery barbs doesn't ever trigger, and split enchantment wouldn't matter. Another point of fact I should bring up as well is the arcane trickster rogue. When they go ahead and choose their spells as they level up, the spells must be of the enchantment or illusion spell, which does mean that the arcane trickster right out the gate can have access to silvery barbs. I don't think we need to point out how once again you could use silvery barbs as a reaction to... Uh, lower the, you know, potentially turn a success on the enemy part into a failure, but then also choose yourself as the benefit of the advantage, so that way your next attack has advantage again, potentially triggering uh, sneak attack as well. And lastly, one of the things that a lot of people have brought up, and I, it's tricky, but it's legendary resistance. So normally, legendary resistance on higher level creatures says if the dragon fails a saving throw, it can choose to, in this instance, it says dragon, but it's the creature, right? But again, for the adult or the adult amethyst dragon, if this if the dragon fails a, a saving throw, it can choose to succeed instead. But the trigger for silvery barbs is when they succeed on an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw. And it says the triggering creature must re-roll the d20 using the lower roll. So I think technically the way that's written is Amethyst Dragon makes a roll, fails the saving throw, activates its legendary resistance, thus succeeding on the spell, triggering, allowing you to trigger silvery barbs, forcing them to re-roll the d20 and take the lower roll. Now, the only I, I don't think this works the way people are saying because 
You do, again, you do potentially make your initial legendary resistance roll in which you fail and then choose to use legendary resistance to succeed. My point with this, I think, is legendary resistance when triggered does not require a roll. It's just I choose to succeed. But I can also see the argument the other way that Silvery Barbs triggers on a success. So they have now succeeded. I force them to roll and take the lower roll. My only question is, it, my only kind of qualm with it is they must re-roll the D20. Technically, for the Legendary Resistance, we didn't roll a D20, but we did initially before we failed and then chose to overcome it with Legendary Resistance. So that is a possibility that Silvery Barbs will allow you to completely negate Legendary Resistance. Like, the dragon or whatever creature feels safe because it's got three to five Legendary Resistances, and you can basically make them all null and void for the purposes, uh, for the cost of, the low, low cost of a first level spell. Now, and again, I will remind you that it's just a trigger on an attack roll ability check or saving throw succeeding. There is no saving throw or anything. It just happens. Now, this obviously could be counterspelled, potentially, if the creature you're doing using this on has counterspell. But I might be able to shut down Legendary Resistance, one of the most powerful abilities for monsters in the game, with a simple first level spell that anyone can gain access to via the Fey Touched Feet. Now maybe there's some stuff out there that I missed, and I'm sure there is. I'd love to hear what other shenanigans you think Silvery Barbs can get into by combining different races and classes and things along those lines. What weird scenarios do you see it working? I mean, some people brought it up, but in a way, it could almost be a low, uh, a low resource use uh, counterspell. So if I, again, if I cast a spell and you go to counterspell it, but it's high enough that you need to make the roll, the ability check. So let's say I cast a fifth level spell and you cast a third level counterspell. So you'd have to make that roll to see if you're able to beat it and then overcome it and counterspell it. Well, I could, in theory, silvery barbs your, <laughs> your successful counterspell roll uh, and then say, okay, well, you succeeded, but now I'm going to have you reroll and take the lower number via Silvery Barbs while also benefiting an ally. Now, in another circumstance, you could counterspell the counterspell, but Silvery Barbs is just a better economic use because Silvery Barbs is a first level spell versus third or higher. And I guess lastly, lastly, I know I said lastly before, but I was thinking of something really interesting, and I'm not entirely sure the mechanics of it, so I thought I'd pose this to all of you. So Silvery Barbs, again, as we know, triggers on a successful attack roll ability check or saving throw. Let's say the party is sneaking through a barracks or sneaking down a hall through a dungeon, whatever the case may be. And the DM says everybody makes stealth checks. Everybody makes stealth checks. And then the DM makes a perception check for the creature you're attempting to sneak past. That creature succeeds on that ability check. You then use your reaction to cast Silvery Barbs, potentially turning their successful perception check to notice you guys into a failure. How does that work? Because in all, if you think about this, I'm tiptoeing down the hallway. You make a perception check, you see me. I then use my reaction with a verbal component spell to say, you know what, no, why don't you re-roll that perception check and see if you fail. And let's say you roll a, a five, right? And you, you end up failing. You saw me with your perception check. I made an audible noise via the verbal component of Silvery Barb's The Spell but because you failed, or you did worse on the second roll, you actually fail that initial perception check because of the way Silvery Barbs works. And then I could, in theory, apply it to myself to gain advantage on a stealth check. But again, like there was a whole interaction where you saw me, I cast a spell, it makes noise, but then I override your initial check to see me. I, maybe I'm not explaining that well enough, but it's just another one of the weird nuances of the game. How do you think that's supposed to work? How would you run it in your game? Were you a player? What would you want to advocate the DM go for that? And if you're a DM, how would you run it in your game? Or would you just outright ban Silvery Barbs? 
or make some other adjustments to it to make it more in line with what you think a first level spell should be. I'm very curious to hear your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. I also would like to say thank you for continually driving this subscriber count number up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet and you like what I do here, I would greatly appreciate it if you did so. And I will see you all next time.